Hey everybody and welcome back to the Dev Marketer channel. I'm your host J.A. Curtis, but you guys can call me Alex. And this is the this is part number six of our series on uh, Vue.js fundamentals and how to get started with Vue.js. Now we're covering the basics right now, but we're moving on up and getting into more advanced functionality and real world examples in the coming videos, okay? Now today's video is an important one actually. At, um, at face value, this is actually a really simple concept, and you might wonder why it's even got its own video, but I really want you guys to think about the possibilities of what we're about to learn more so than the exact example, okay? Where we are right now in our learning process, the example that we're gonna do is very basic and simple, but think about the possibilities of this as you um, you know start, as we work with it, okay? And we're gonna start working with two-way binding. Now, two-way binding is a concept with Vue.js that makes Vue.js so powerful. And I know some of you guys are probably familiar with this if you've used Angular um, Angular before. Angular's also got two-way binding. And we've got the same thing in Vue.js, but obviously with the way much lighter footprint than what Angular comes with. So now if you do need the, that functionality of two-way binding, you can plop it into an application with something as simple as Vue.js. And that's what makes this so cool. Okay, now let's go ahead and just dive into this, see how it works, and again, think about the possibilities of this as we work with it. Okay, so let's go on over to our application here, and again, you're going to want to download the, the source code off of GitHub. Link is in the description where you can go to download it. You're going to download the source code, go to prod to go to the folder part, go to folder named part six like this, and then you're going to want to start with the start.html. You'll have the code that I've got in front of me. You'll have it as well. All right, so now with this. Um, you can see we've got the basic application we've had before, basic HTML template. We've got a div with an ID of app. Inside of here, we have an H1. The outputs are message, right? And then down here, we've got um, our you know our view object. It's li it's linked to the uh, ID of app element. And then here's our data model down here, which is um, we've got message equal to hello view world. So you guys have already seen this a hundred times, but if I um, refresh this, you can see it says hello view world. Basic basic stuff, right? Okay. Now what I want to talk to you about here is basically the concept of one way two way binding. Now right now we're seeing two or one way binding already. Where this is our uh, data model down here at the bottom, and you can see that message is equal to hello view world, and we've bound it to this um, H1 up here, right? And we've already seen this, I'm not gonna replicate it again, but you've seen that how we can change this on the fly um, without refreshing our application. If we change the value of this data model, it automatically updates up here, right? That's one-way binding. So this is bound to this, right? Now two-way binding is taking it a step further. How can we take something else, bind it to this, and then this is bound to this, okay? So it's now bound coming in and bound coming out, all right? Now let me give you, you're gonna see this really easy here, but if we create an input, um, this is like a text input, let's do type equals text, right? And um, then we can go ahead and um, let's go ahead and create, add another directive called v-model. Now you're already familiar with directives, we've been using them for a little bit, so we know anything with this v dash is a view directive, right? Now this is a special view directive called model, which basically is saying, hey, take the value of whatever we've got in, um, you know, whenever, wherever we put this v model, whatever HTML element we put it in, we're saying, hey, make this element bound to the model that we input here inside the quotation mark. So we're gonna bound it to message, right? So now we're saying that the value of input is bound to the, the model message. Now you guys are familiar with Laravel and some other stuff, I'm sure when we talked about MVC. This is what we call an MVVC framework, um, or sorry, MVVM, not MVVC, MVVM. And what that stands for is model view, view model. Um, and so think about the same way we talked about MVC, we've got the model is always the data, right? That's like the persistent data object. And then the view is what's displayed to the user. And then we've got the controller as well. Now that we don't t worry too much about the controller in here, but we do have this concept of where we've got the view is what we displayed up here. And then we've got the model, which is right here. And um, of course these can be broken out into different, uh, app, into different files, but they're not in this application because I'm just keeping it simple. Um, so what we've got here is we're saying, hey, the mo this is the model, MVVC. So the model ties to the view, but at the same time, the view 
can tie back to the model. So that's where you get the model view, view model concept is because we've got the model tying to the view and then the view can also tie back to the model and you kind of have this loop, right? That's two-way binding. That's what makes view.js so powerful. Now let's see what this is all about. Let's go ahead and save this, go into the browser and see how it works. Let's go ahead and refresh. We've got model view or hello view world and you can see that because um, the V model, oops, sorry, the V model is bound to message. Uh, sorry, this input is bound to this the model message. We're going to instantly get the value that message is equal to, right? And so now, if we come down here, let's go to at. Oops, dang it, I ruined it. I was going to show you. So um, let's go to app dot message and set it equal to hello. And you can see that they both update, right? Because they're both bound to this object. However, the view is actually bound, um, the input can actually modify the value of this app.message. So currently app.message is equal to hello. If we say hello world, you can see obviously that it updates immediately. And if I come down here to the browser and look for the value of message, I now get hello world, even though I haven't updated it down here, I haven't updated it directly, I updated it through the input, okay? So what's happening here is that this input the input is updating the message object, the message model, and then the message model is updating the, um, you know, the output here, okay? So what we put inside of here is being input into this model right here. This model is then being output up here, okay? So that's where you get this two-way binding. Again, as of right now, it may not seem very advanced. You might be wondering like, well, what would I use this for where we have an input? that just displays the exact same information to the user. Well, it seems silly and you probably may not, but if you start thinking about other applications of this, that's where it really gets powerful. And that's why I want you to think beyond this example and just be thinking about the power that this um, opportunity provides us. So everything that happens in the view as the user interacts with our application is immediately updated into the model, immediately. And then we can output that information immediately as well. So that is, there's constantly, um, you know, that two-way binding. So start thinking about other applications for this. For example, you have a checkbox. What if you want the checkbox to display something, display another message, display? You can do something like that because as soon as they check the checkbox, it's going to update in the model. You can have the model bound to um, you know, something else on the screen. And we're going to use some of these examples in the next few videos when we start working with events. Okay. So view, the view model or the, this V model directive is really, really powerful. There's no code going on here. This allows us to just focus on building our application and not worrying about binding example, but we can start doing other more advanced stuff as we start tying this into new things. Okay. So just think about the power that V model provides. It's actually much more widespread than the example I give you. And we're going to start seeing this in action in the next few videos when we start putting these to use okay with real world examples okay so that hopefully that was useful for you guys this is a super powerful concept in view.js and it becomes even more powerful as we start tying it into events and user interaction which we're going to learn about in the next video so stay tuned for that one